All right, so welcome back. Vlog episode number two. Today we're gonna to talk about the Orlando Jazz Workshop. This is the first year we've done the camp and it has been amazing. It's been four days of nonstop master classes, lessons, merchandise, and we got vendors. 55 kids our first year. This is an amazing experience and we can't wait to just watch this grow throughout the Orlando community. Uh, so for those of you that aren't familiar with that name, the Orlando Jazz Workshop is a workshop I created last year and I called it the South Orlando Jazz Workshop. And it was like a way for me to, you know, we have a lot of students here at Devil Music Studio and we didn't have much jazz in our camps. We have a saxophone camp called Saxophone Colossus, but there wasn't much of a jazz thing. So we had a lot of students coming up to me asking about jazz and um, where there's gonna be jazz in the camp, you know, all this stuff. Uh, and we didn't really know. So I was like, you know what? I wanna make my own camp back in 2017. So. Um, in December of 2017, I decided to kind of get with my friends and, and make a, a camp, you know, like a, what I would want as a high schooler, you know, to go to if I if I had to go to jazz camp. We got all these artists from Orlando, like Elaine Burdett, Danny Jordan, Chuck Archard. Chris Rottmeyer, a bunch of Orlando names. And then I got Chad Lefkowitz Brown. <laughs> to come in. And you know, he's, you know, got 50, 60,000 followers on Instagram now and huge and you know he's one of my teachers for a while and it was just a great way you know to get him down here and we got to play a gig at Pillars and that video on my YouTube channel has like a crazy amount of views and likes and all this stuff and it was actually just talked about on Facebook too because some some guy on Facebook was like, can someone send me a video of Chad Lefkowitz Brown being melodic or something stupid? It was it was so stupid. And when someone like put the video link to Softways of Morning Sunrise in there and made a comment about me, which was very nice and everything, but you know, Chad's the real deal. Uh, so I wanted to like do something big this year, you know, to kind of just make sure the camp grows. Uh, I mean, a little bit change in admin, you know, so I kind of solely own this now. Um, I, it, I was the creator, but I had a partner, and now I just kind of do this by myself, for the most part. I do have a lot of help, you know, from, but I'm saying, like, for the ideas and stuff. Um, so, I got Carol Stafford this year. Dick Oates. Chad Lefkowitz Brown again. I'm playing random notes. <laughs> There's no reason for any of it. <laughs> and Adam Nussbaum. who is one of my childhood heroes, you know, as a jazz musician. I, I listen to Brecker and um, all those recordings of Brecker, live recordings of Brecker from like the, you know, late 80s um, into the early 90s and stuff when Adam was there. And I got to talk with Adam on the phone, you know, and I still talk to him and I consider him a, you know, a, a, an ally, I guess, or a friend. They're all gonna be down here. Um, it's gonna be really cool. There's still time to sign up when this video is posted. It'll probably be posted um, the 30th or earlier, maybe the 31st, depending. Uh, and it's at Rollins College, a beautiful campus here in Orlando, well, Winter Park, Florida. And I've been just kind of doing stuff with that right now. And um, the artists fly in on Tuesday, the 11th, and they're here all the way through Friday. 
um, and they're gonna play the concert and there's gonna be a concert at the Blue Bamboo Center for the Arts. It's gonna be really, really cool. It segues me into a question I get a lot on Instagram is, how did you get these endorsements with Lupafaro and Retro Revival and Key Leaves and, and have relationships with other companies? So, here's the story about um, the key, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go one by one. So Key Leaves, boom, is a company based in Seattle, run by this guy named Rulon Brown, who's now a very good friend of mine, a colleague. And uh, he launched his company, in, I think in 2018, early 2018, I think, maybe 2017. Um, and they were on social media, and this guy named The Sack Spy, which I have a sticker somewhere. There we go. Sack Spy. <laughs> Big fan of stickers. Um, got in touch with me from Instagram, and he's got lots of followers and stuff. And he got in touch with me and was like, hey man, do you want to do this thing called the Key Leaves Challenge? And this is when I was, I was posting like almost every day on Instagram, trying to grow a following and, you know, and I was like, yeah, sure. I would love to do the Key Leaves Challenge. So he sent me a pair, uh, which are... <laughs> and they say, I don't know if this will pick up on the camera, Sack Spy on them, right? Hopefully you can see that. And um, I was like, dope. So I put a, pic uh, put a picture up on Instagram on my, uh, at the time it was my con, and these fit really well in the con, and really I wanted to feature me be uh, because he doesn't have a lot of artists at the time that played a con with these. So... You know, and I guess Rulon saw a couple of my videos, and he was like, or we, we started talking, and I was like, hey, I have this workshop coming up. Can you send some key leaves? And, you know, I'll sell them at my camp. We can have a key leaves booth, you know? Uh, we already had some people coming for a booth. And he was like, yeah, man, let's totally do it. And I was like, great, great, great. So we got a relationship, and he sent me stuff, and I think he saw me use play on his Instagram videos, and he asked me to become an artist for the company and, and for them to endorse me. And I was like, this is like my dream to be an endorsed artist, you know, for saxophone, even products in general, reads, whatever. Um, so I was like, yes, of course, I'd love that to happen. So that one was probably the most surprise and the sm smooth, well, maybe not the smoothest, but the, the one that was the least expected. Um, so that happened. And then I was looking to have a saxophone company come to the camp. And, you know, I had been a student of chat. So this is how the Lubafaro thing kind of happened. And um, I was like, hey, Chad, you know, you're gonna to come to my camp. Can I get Lupa Faro's information and see if you know if they can support you coming or like, you know, send some saxophones to the camp? And he's like, yeah, sure. So I sent them an email and I was like, hey, my name is Ryan Devlin. You know, this is what I'm doing. This is how many kids we're expecting. We'll be on a booth with saxophones. We'd love to have Lupa Faro there and yada yada yada. So um, I had I just sent an email out, email out and I was like, here we go. You know, something happens. Something happens. They email me back and they're like, you know, Ryan, we'd love to support the camp. You know, this, we'd love to sponsor and send horns. We have a guy in Miami that has horns from when there was a NAM show close by. I can't remember, it was probably in Miami. And I was like, okay, cool. So the guy, Steven is his name, was going to drive the horns up, stay for a day for the camp, let people try it, and go home. And that was great. And in that time, um, I asked them, I was like, you know, I'm a young saxophone player and, you know, looking for a company to help support Devlin Music Studio, you know, myself as a, as a young college, I, I don't, I'm not sure what my email said. What do you look for in an artist? You know, one of my buddies, Kyle Schroeder, great saxophone player who's in Tampa but goes to uh, University of Miami, sent me this article because he is sponsored by Antigua. And I was like, you know, how'd you do this and get this whole thing? And he was like, you always need to make sure that you, when you approach companies, you never want to be like, just give me the horn, you know, I want to play, you know, me, me, me. You want to make sure that you can give them something or, or say to them that you want to help their company as much as, you know, in the long run, they're going to help you. Um, so I was just like, you know, I'd love to get, you know, help you with your U.S. audience, you know, because not a lot of people know about Lupafaro here until Chad, you know. Um, so how, you know, what can I do or what can, you know, can the, our music studios sell reads for you or sell horns or whatever. And then we kind of got one thing after another and they're, uh, the boss of Lupa Faro, uh, uh, Luca and their representative Roberto, um, said that they'd like for me to become an artist and it became official and then they sent me a horn and I play Lupa Faro's exclusively unless I drop them, which has happened before <laughs> and, or they're in the shop or whatever. And that's how it came to be. I also, because of, uh, the sax pie. Uh, Derek, 
I um, got involved with Retro Revival because uh, he he had a relationship with them and he wanted to send like things to the camp, you know, send mouthpieces. So he sent like literally like ten mouthpieces, I think. And uh, it, it was you know it just in a he just called me and he was like, yeah, I'm totally down. You know, uh, Derek has told me a lot about you and a lot about the camp. We'd love to have a relationship there. And you know, amazing. You know, I was like, wow, <laughs> yeah, please send mouthpieces. Um, and Van Doren even sent reads for us for free, like a like literally like a hundred reads for free. It was amazing. Um, so I was like, please send, you know, and then after the camp, I think they saw some videos of me again, or I sent some videos and I was like, you know, I'd love to become a retro revival artist. I'd love for you guys to support Devil Music Studio, to support me and to help, you know, I want to support your company and, you know, post videos and reviews and all this stuff. And I, you know, I told them about my social media following and well, the, the little that it is, it's not even, it's not even, it's nothing compared to Chad and, and, you know, all those guys, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a following, at least in the younger community. Uh, and he was like. He called me on the phone, he's like, we'd love for you to be an artist. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna play the Super D mouthpiece now, and that's gonna be my setup. And it was all pr very smooth, just a phone call and boom. And then I announced it on Instagram and everything happened. So, uh, to answer the question of how this all happened is basically I just talked to these people and were like, hey, you know, this is what I wanna do, this is how I wanna help your company, this is how I wanna get involved. Can, can you do something, you know, for me? So to kind of answer another question along with this is, you know, how do you get endorsements? And that's kind of a weird question. And I know Chad has talked about this too with me. He's like, because people ask all the time. Or, and, you know, it's more about working, like I said, working with a company that you can do more for them than what they do for you. You know, Lupa Faro sent me a horn. That's amazing, you know. But I want to make sure that, you know, I sold a horn for them. You know, I'm going to sell more horns for them. And I, you know, do things on social media for them and, and, and all this stuff. You know, that's that's a big thing that I can do that, you know, can hopefully help them and, but they're giving me a horn is going to help me. And same with Retro Revival, they send me mouthpieces at any time that I want, you know, I ask and, and they're, they're very generous and send them to me, you know, and I post about it a lot on social media and, and all that stuff, you know, and I don't ever want to seem like a sellout or anything. I'm just helping these companies that are helping me. It's hard to just say, I'm going to go out and get a sponsorship, you know what I mean? And, and you never want to just reach out to a company and say, will you sponsor me? Or, you know, you know I have friends, you know, that have that are sponsored, like I said, Kyle Schroeder and Justin Mendez who's an incredible saxophone player who's sponsored by, um, you know, Silverstein and Ishimori and, you know, he goes to NAMM every year and that's really, really awesome. I want to go to NAMM next year, hopefully. Um, you know, so there's people that build relationships in different ways and that's just the way that I did it, you know. I did it through, the, you know, basically communicating through email or phone call and using the Orlando Jazz Workshop as kind of like a, a segue or a tunnel to get to that, you know. So it's pretty cool. I, I was pretty, I mean, I was proud of myself in a way that I could, you know, that I could work with companies and, and have that businessman or business side of the uh, side of the music field that I enjoy doing and also um, just building relationships, you know, that will hopefully last. And this year we're going to have another Retro Revival booth, we'll have another Lupa Faro booth, another Keeley's booth, you know, Reed Revolution is now jumping on, the Music Shack, which is a local thing down here, Music and Arts, you know, so just building building relationships you know the camp is at Rollins this year which is a college campus a private college by the way uh, beautiful campus you know and um, you know it's not a middle school last year it was on middle school I'm very thankful for the people that I get to work with and, and have relationships with so we can do these things the camp is at Rollins College June 10th to the 14th uh, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. go to our website www.orlandojazzworkshop.co links in the description and um, I'll, you know, be talking about this a little bit more depending on how many vlogs they put out. And I will put out a giant vlog about all the Orlando Jazz Workshop and what it was like to be with all these artists, you know. Um, super excited about it. You know, also subscribe if you're new. We just hit 500, which is really awesome. Um, comment what you want to know more about. And I'm going to, I'll try and put out one of the, like, two vlogs a week or something like that, you know, so I can answer more questions. But I thought this is a really good one to have. Uh, in the f at the beginning of this season of vlogs and stuff up front because it's the mo the question I get the most Brian is your besides mouthpieces but I'll answer more in the next one see you guys later <laughs>